Hello, and welcome back to my Allen Bradley PLC test bench. Today we're going to have a look at the Allen Bradley Palview 1400E, specifically the 2711E T14C6. Now that's this old beast here. When these came out, these were the top of the line technology in 1996, 1997. And they sold them right up until the early 2000s in the same configuration, except that they took out the original screens, which were CRTs, and put in LCDs. Now, there's a huge number of these still in service. And because the technology is old and we've got a younger generation coming up that have never worked with them, they don't know what to do. So, when one of these dies on you, the, the screen will go black and it'll get all fuzzy and do things. That's CRTs. That's just the way they work. This particular one, I've already put an LCD into it. Now, when you take one out and put another one in, quite often you'll say, or your maintenance guy will say, okay, now we have to download the program to it. And people may be scrambling, scratching their heads, Where's the backup? Where's the software? Where's our null modem cable? Or how do we connect with this thing? Well, there's a way to save yourself a lot of grief, and that's what we're going to go over today. These things, like anything Alan Bradley built in the in previous to 2005, somewhere in that area, are modular. You can take pieces off of one and put onto the other. So what we'll do is I'll show you how to do it. Um, First off, we're in our terminal configuration screen. And if you go to terminal diagnostics, which is there, you come up with this screen here. Touch cells, and you can go through and make sure that all of your touch cells work. Okay to exit, battery test, passes, user RAM, and if it says, power loss during the test may corrupt the user RAM. So make sure you're on a good, clean power source. I'm on a UPS. And application checksum. And hours logged. Now that's hours logged according to the memory board that's installed on this particular machine. It says it's been running 34,201 hours and 12 minutes at this point. That's average for these things. The CRT failed in it at about 34,180 hours. So it got pulled up and given to me for repair. So when these die, you take, first thing you do, power it down, and you undo all of the mounting screws, and with your one person on one side, one person on the other, you slide it in and out. These things weigh, with the CRT, 40 pounds. Now, as you can see, I've changed, like I say, this one's all cleaned up. And, here's the back of it. Now, because it's got an LCD in it, I've removed the cooling fan. You don't need that anymore. All that did was make noise and pull dirt into it and make it so that it uh, failed earlier. So, the memory on these particular panel views is located right here. You have two screws to undo with a Phillips screwdriver. They're stainless steel. Don't lose them because you need them to put it back together. and it drops down. Now, I'm going to reposition the camera at this point over here so that you can see into the board and see what I'm doing. We'll be back in a sec. Okay, so here we are back again. Now, as you can see, this is a tray. There's three cables on it. This one is your touch screen at the front. This one Make sure everybody can see there. Yeah, the, this is your power cable from the power supply on this side. And this is the cable where you plug in for your LCD screen that gives your display. Now, these two batteries are lithiums. And they do 
die after 15, 20, 30 years, whatever. Um, to change them out, might as well talk about it while we've got it open here. Cut the tie wraps. You cut these, these uh, right here, very carefully with a very sharp pair of uh, cutters on both sides. And then you get new 3 volt batteries. They're BR3s. BR two thirds A, and you get uh, tabs welded on either end, and then you put them back in and you solder your your plate, existing plate onto the new plate. Um, something that needs to be done properly, and is not something you have to do that often. That's where the bat. That's why you always test the battery. So anyhow, that's that part. So your key, your uh, front key, uh, keypad or touchscreen plugs in here. Now, as you can see, there's a white wire, and on the board right here it says white wire. This wiggles off. It's a eight-pin header. There's only five wires used, and these three are empty. This is the only spot it goes. I have seen it down over here, which is the wrong spot. And there was one that I chipped out. Somebody changed the memory board, which we're going to show you how to do. And they put it back in the wrong spot and said, well, it doesn't work. Well, it goes over here. Anyhow, so to get this board off, it's actually quite simple. Um, make sure it's stable. You just pull. As you can see, hopefully, there's a hole right there on either side and there's indents on either side here which is what the lever is and the easy way to get it on and off. Next thing you do is take the power cable off or you can take this off whichever. Now you can see it's missing half here that's because these are older and the plastic is brittle. So you lever it up with your finger a little bit and very gently wiggle it off. That's all you have to do. And then this side here is our cable that goes to the LCD. It's the same as any other computer monitor. And when you're looking at, a brand, at an old unit that's never been opened before, the original cable that came from the CRT had a couple of tie wraps on it. You cut the tie wraps and you pull it off like that. Now when I put this back on for before I ship it out to a customer, I'm going to have the two little nuts there so these tie it down rather than tie wraps. You take it off and you mark it so that you know that this is your board that was running and you're going to, you want this on your new panel view. So you put it off to the side. You do exactly the same thing with, with your replacement panel view. You take off the memory that you don't know what is on there and you bring this one over, and this is our one with our LCD screen. You plug in your display cable first and tighten these down. Like I say, there'll be some screws in there. You plug in your power cable. And again, use two, two hands to get it in there nice and solid. And put your touch screen interface cable onto there and you just kind of lay it back you put in one side then you put in the other you don't have to slam it really hard you just, and you close it put your two screws in take your partner slide it in power it up and you're back to where you were up and running it should take you an hour or so to change out from one to the other uh, because there's a lot of screws here. There's three, six, nine, twelve, and you got to get your nut, get your long extension in there to get those out. So there you go. That's all there is to change and note the panel view 1400E. One screw in there, so that, and when especially when you can't find your software or your upload download cable or anything like that. This way you don't need it. Um, it's not really mentioned in any manuals anywhere, but that's how it goes. 
So there you go. Come back anytime you want. Subscribe often. Subscribe if you'd like. And uh, hopefully uh, this is helpful to you. Thank you very much.